Now, from the makers of Cold Water Omo. Oh, it's fine if Lucas on the train, sir. Huh? You say he's 50, balding, six feet tall, and rather heavy? That's right. No one like him on board. In any place I haven't tried is the guard's van. Let's meet up in the restaurant car for coffee. All right. Keep your eyes open, Mrs. Beale. Oh, I intend to. You know, I just can't believe that sign, just married, is for real. I don't think young couples went in for that sort of publicity these days. Well, you can't very well interrupt them. The lines are down. Mm. But if Lucas wanted complete privacy, what better way could he have of achieving it? Mm. All right, over to you, Mrs. Beale. On your own head, be it. The Avengers. and Emma Peel, The Avengers. There is no dirt that can stand up to the cleaning power of cold water Omo. Over one million South African housewives have proved it. And Mrs. Bodington is one of them. My wash is beautiful. Mm -hmm. I'm very proud of it. My husband particularly wears a lot of white plain bowls and his clothing always looks delightful. There's nothing like cold water Omo. Yes, once an Omo user, always an Omo user. Cold water Omo is the washing powder that cleans best. There's too much chocolate, too much chocolate, double chocolate ice. There's too much chocolate. chocolate inside, milk chocolate outside, double chocolate, chocolate pop, the chocolate ice. Double chocolate, another great taste from and Emma Peel complete a journey which leads to a very strange train of events. John Steed had taken an urgent phone call from Mark Lucas, one of Britain's top secret agents. Lucas had told him that he was onto something big but couldn't divulge more information over a telephone. He'd requested that they meet his train at Norborough at 8.10. Steed and Mrs. Peel kept the appointment, but Lucas didn't get off the train, and so Steed and Mrs. Peel got onto it. They had searched all along the corridors, but it had no luck. Steed was quite worried, as Mark Lucas wasn't the sort of man to ask for help unless he was in a very tight spot. Mrs. Peel, still intrigued by the just married sign on the compartment door, knocked smartly and entered. Hey, beg your pardon. Oh, I'm so sorry. Wrong compartment. It has got a notice up, you know. Has it? I didn't see. Yes. Just married. We'd like to be alone, if you don't mind. Oh, yes, yes, of course. I'm so sorry. Oh, congratulations, by the way. Bye-bye. I wonder if that notice wasn't a mistake. Seems to attract people, not put them off. You know who that woman is? Never seen her before in my life. She must have gone up in Aubra. Better keep an eye out for you. have got trouble enough without trying eyes. If she comes back and causes trouble, let me know, right? Right. Meantime, since it's supposed to be a honeymoon, couldn't we order just one bottle of champagne? Just for appearance's sake. Please, Bart. In the restaurant car, Mrs. Peel chose a seat and looked around her. Can I help you, madam? Oh, thank you, but I'm waiting for someone... I can't understand it. This man said he'd be here ten minutes ago. Perhaps you've seen him. He's about 50, uh, six feet, rather heavily built, going bald. No, madam, no, no. no. What's the I'll see no one I can. Can I help? Oh, lady's lost her friend. Uh, lost? Off the train? <laughs> well, your friend can't have gone far, can he? Well, he isn't actually a friend, exactly. Oh? No, he, um... Well, he, he seemed agitated, so I spoke to him, and... Well, he said he was in trouble. I see. 
And what else did he tell you? Just that he was broke. That's why I lent him the money. Oh, is that so? Mm. Yes, five pounds. I gave him five pounds. Well, that's why you're so anxious to find it. Yes, excuse me. The ticket collector searched in his waistcoat pocket and withdrew a small bottle. He unclasped the lid and popped a lozenge into his mouth. And Mrs. Peel suppressed a smile and raised an eyebrow. Tranquilizer. Twenty years of the railway plays a very devil with one's stomach. I'm so sorry I can't help you, ma'am. He probably gave you the slip at Norbra. Yes, that's the most likely thing. Slipped off at Norbra. That's what he must have done. The ticket collector disappeared from the restaurant car and headed for the guard's van. In the guard's van, Steed was making a quick search. There were several large packing cases and various crates. Hmm. All big enough to contain a body. Can't open up all of them. Steed turned to a large trestle table and lifted a sheet of tarpaulin. An Egyptian mummy case. How extraordinary. Steed managed to get the lid off without much difficulty. How oh, extraordinary. Empty. Just a paper bag. Oh, sandwiches. Hmm. Look rather tasty. Steed helped himself to a sandwich, munching away delightedly when the ticket collector said, Well, hmm, bread's amazingly fresh. Little sausage. It would have been more tasty on rye bread. As it happens, I prefer white bread. Oh, I'm so sorry. I, I didn't realize it. What are you doing in here, sir, if I may be so bold? Well, I'm looking for someone. In there. Well, he always was a mummy's boy. Well... It was at that moment that Steve noticed Mark Lucas's briefcase down amongst the luggage. Without batting an eyelid, he stooped, picked it up, and sauntered away, saying, Norbra was your only stop, wasn't it? That's right, sir. Hmm. Well, then he must still be on the train. Thank you. Steed made his way back to the restaurant car. Mrs. Peel wasn't there. She'd found herself an empty compartment. As Steed started to walk past, she rapped on the glass. Luck. Well, unless he's traveling incognito as a young bride, he isn't on the train. I managed to pick this up in the guard's van. Steed dropped the briefcase down on the seat. The little leather tag had the name Mark Lucas clearly printed upon it. This means he is on the train. It was. And he's in trouble. It's standard procedure. If an agent hits trouble and has to run, he has to leave something behind, something to identify. Mm. But if this is true, then where did he run to? We know he didn't get off at Norbra. The train doesn't stop anyone else. Is the case locked? Yes. James Park! James Park! End of the line! Come on, Mrs. Steele. We'll attend to this back at my place. Oh, excuse me, madam. Uh, a gentleman asked me to give you this. The attendant handed Mrs. Peel a five-pound note. Uh, he said to uh, apologize for the inconvenience. Bye. You know, I really must try that one a bit more often. As the train drew into the station, Mrs. Peel followed Steed along the corridor. As they passed the door with just Mary on it... Bart and his so-called bride were picking up their things. Oh, goodbye. Have a happy honeymoon. Thanks. Come on, dear, let's go. Shh. That's it, Bart. Do you see what that man is carrying under his arm? Just a briefcase. Mark Lucas's briefcase. Must have picked it up here on the train. What do we do? Leave this to me. Bart placed one hand underneath his coat, checking on the gun in its holster. Then, turning up the collar of his coat, made after Steed and Mrs. Peel, who were heading for a taxi bank. Watch it, Steed. The journey isn't over yet. The briefcase presented little trouble to open. Yeah. Small automatic. Wallet. A label marked 4767. Framed photo of a sweet old lady. His mother? Uh, Auntie Maud. Do you know her? Uh, Maud. M A U D. Microfilm and unciphered documents. Army issue pouch. Agents for the use of. Right. What else? 4767. Fourth of July, 67. Independence Day? Could be. Lots of papers. Take us some time to decipher these. Steve, there's other photographs here. This one, 
Edward Salt. He was on the train. Personal secretary to Admiral Cartney. You sure he was on the train? Yes. Who's Admiral Cartney? Big wig at the Admiralty. Might be worth looking into this while I tackle the paperwork. Hmm, shall be done. First thing in the morning. Right now, I'm going to put the kettle on for coffee. I shan't be long. Steed returned to the examination of the briefcase when... All right, I'll get it. Bart stood in the doorway, a newspaper in one hand, and behind the newspaper, a gun. Bart smiled, raised the newspaper. But Steed, sensing that something was very wrong, slammed the door shut. There was a shot. Steed waited, slowly and cautiously, opened the door. Bart fell into the room, dead. Mrs. Peel entered from the kitchen at Steed. Steed, what the... Whoops. You really are going to have trouble with your cleaning lady. She must be fed up with this sort of thing. Uh, he tried to kill me. Antisocial. But you ruined his honeymoon. Huh? This man, he was on the train. Accompanied by a blushing bride, they were the ones I checked on. Mm. Let's see what he was carrying on him. Mm. Wallet. Yeah, he was carrying a rail ticket. Chase Holt Station. What's that? About three stops down the line from Norborough, except that nothing stops there anymore. Oh, why? Because Chase Holt closed down years ago. I think we shall have to take yet another train journey. Don't you, Mrs. Peel? to have such a hard-working servant. <laughs> what do you mean? I haven't got a maid. Well, how on earth do you manage to keep your floors so clean and shiny? Ah, that's easy. I use Dual. Dual? Yes, Dual. The self-shining floor cleaner. It's so easy because Dual cleans and polishes in one go. How do you mean? Well, Dual lifts all the dirt out of the floor and dries to a bright, long-lasting shine all by itself. So when you use Dual, you don't have to worry about polishing. No. Dual cleans and polishes in one go. There's no dirt that can stand up to the cleaning power of cold water Omo. If you use cold water Omo, it comes out very, very easily indeed. Says Mrs. Sutherland of the Inneken. Once an Omo user, always an Omo user. It cleans best. The Avengers. Every evening, Monday to Friday, to John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers, brought to you by the makers of Cold Water Omos.